on the play, and we are underway here in our semifinals. A Klaus and Raptor to begin things. And Jim still has the most important tool in the matchup, of course, which is Supreme Verdict. But I'm sure this is a matchup where he wishes that he did have his Detention Sphere still in the deck. Of course, we do have updates from the other match between Gino Bautista and John McCarthy. We'll let you guys know. Those will probably be fire, firing in pretty quickly. And, of course, after this game is over, we will come back to the booth for our six-month trivia giveaway. I'll have the rules. Patrick will have the question. And Miriam will evolve his Cloudfin Raptor via Judges Familiar. Followed up with another bird, which is actually, again, quite good in this matchup because it does take care of Planner Cleansing and some other effects. Jim is very spell-heavy. That's a card... And Judges Familiar, that wouldn't be able to counter Banishing Light or Detention Sphere. And this is the upside of Deckless being public as well in the elimination rounds. Ross can, with full confidence, play the second copy of Judges Familiar, knowing that Jim doesn't have access to Detention Sphere to punish him for it. Davis, with a couple of lands in his hand, you can see, looks like two copies of Hollow Fountain, two planes over there, and a Zorius Charm. It looks like a Sphinx's Revelation. Revelation looking very bad on this particular board. He's going to need to find himself a Supreme Verdict. And as you mentioned, Verdict is mo one of the most important cards in the matchup for Jim. The fact that he has access to it, it's just a great card against Mono Blue in general. Yeah, it, it punishes all these, you know, draws trying to get to your devotion count. And this is a Night Veil Spectre. It's going to evolve Cloud from Raptor and attack here for four is going to put Davis down to 15. Now the tension is really on Davis as, you know, he's under the gun here. He does draw a copy of Dissolve, but again, Judges Familiar are making that look pretty silly at this point. And it looks like, based on how Ross is playing this game and the fact that he's Mulligan, he seems to be saying, I can't play Beat Supreme Verdict this game and I'm not even going to try. Yep. And then for six we go now, does Miriam. See Davis with an Azorius Charm at the ready. Wonder where he's going to fire that off to. Redrawing Cloud from Raptor is pretty bad. But I guess you could say the same thing for Night Veil Spectre because Night Veil Spectre taking a card here is actually pretty good. It is risky to allow Ross to take a look at any card in Jim's deck, particularly when there are Dissolves and Syncopates that are quite bad for Jim if Ross reveals it to that Night Veil Spectre hit. Four damage is going to come across here. Miriam just going to play a land and pass the turn back. So if you're Jim, you're breathing a bit of a sigh of relief simply because your opponent does not have Thassa. Uh, you know, Master of Waves would have been pretty bad here too, all things considered. Dave is going to play a copy of Jace, Architect of Thought. You know, this is another reason the matchup isn't that great for Jim is because he only has two copies of these. Yep. It's this showing up here is a big deal. For sure. Uh, Ross's draw is, even though it's very, obviously very poorly suited to beat Supreme Verdict, it's almost nearly as poorly suited to beat Jace, Architect of Thought. You see Ross is going to come across with all the creatures, make Jim remember the triggers for Jace. Jim will only take one point of damage. Miriam going to follow up with a Night Veil Spectre before passing the turn back over to Davis, who will take a draw. We'll see how he wants to manage his Jace. Draws a copy of Sphinx's Revelation. You see the Divination hiding out in his hand as well. If Jim were to cast that Divination, I believe he has to do it with five mana now, because I think that because he, he has a Jace in play and Ross has two copies of Judges Familiar, Ross is incentivized to want to counter Divination now. There is an argument for that. The other side of that is maybe... Ross feels he needs to save his Judges Familiars for something more threatening like Planar Cleansing, which Jim is building towards right now. You see Jim in the face of two Judges Familiars says, all right, if you want to count on this Divination, that's fine. And I actually kind of like this play because if Ross shuts off uh, the Divination, he turns on Jim Sphinx's Revelations. Mm -hmm. You see Ross taking a look at his hand, taking a look at his board, and this is a real decision for him. Also, when you've got a Jace out there that, you know, is going to be able to provide Jim with cards too. You might just say, you know what, you can just have your divination. Yeah, I think that's uh, ultimately the conclusion that Ross drew here. There's sometimes where you want to play the card advantage fight and sometimes where you need to play the text box fight. And because Jim already has access to Jace Architect of Thought, Ross needs to be fighting over specific cards and not raw card count. And Jim is building towards some com some threatening cards, the Planar Cleansing we talked about before, and now Sphinx's Revelation as well. So I like Ross deciding to hold on to his Judges Familiars in this spot. Hollow Fountain going to come in and play tap. Jay's going to check on up to six. Davis does, now, does not need to discard, so he just passes the turn back over to Miriam. You see his board, two Judges Familiars, a Cloud from Raptor, that's a 2-3, along with that Night Veil Spectre, that is a 2-3. Miriam looking for one of his haymakers in this matchup, needs a card like Thassa or Master of Waves at this point. You see he's going to attack Davis down here. Jace Triggers will resolve. Miriam going to get himself a Divination, not so bad. Divination's great here for Ross. Going to play a Nykthos, interesting. This Nykthos is going to generate mana. It's going to be three, four, five, six. So he'll have three blue floating, two cards coming. Let's see if he finds anything to do here. And there, there's also a question of does he even want to add to his board at this point? Although I suspect the answer is yes. Ross 
can't really play around Supreme Verdict here. Jim has built up too many resources, so I think Ross has to almost just concede the game to that card and play as though it's not in Jim's deck. Maren going to play his land for the turn, simply pass the turn back, so nothing really doing. Oh, he actually played Nick, though, so we rewind that action, and we do pass the turn back over to Davis, it looks like. Davis wondering how many cards do you have? The answer looks to be three. Now, one card that actually can play a pretty nice role here for Miriam is Hall of Triumph. Oh, yeah. Gonna make those creatures actually relevant again and work through that Jace. A card that Mono Blue did not have access to before, but thanks to Journey into Nyx, Miriam is playing two of that card. You see Davis draw a card for the turn. It looks to be another copy of Hollow Fountain. Also a Muta Vault and a couple other lands hanging out over there. And this is a curious squeeze for Jim to be in because he kind of wants to minus his Jace and find Supreme Verdict and end this game. But if he minuses his Jace and misses on Supreme Verdict, he's in a ton of trouble. And he's gained a lot of value right now by just plussing his Jace. So at what point does Jim actually decide to pull the trigger Minus Jace in Search of Supreme Verdict. And there's your Muta Vault. Looks like Jim going to tick up that Jace one more time. Up to seven. The Cumberstone effect is happening. And he will just pass the turn back over to Miriam, who will untap those lands, as well as those creatures. He will take a draw here. Looks like he may have picked up another copy of Judge's Familiar. I'm with you in that Ross is in the situation now where he doesn't have much of a choice. He has to, you know, just basically work his way through this. If he doesn't need creatures to cast, I think he has to cast them. Yes. Quick update for you guys in the back. I'll match Gina Bautista with Mono Red. Does win game one over John McCarthy playing Mono Black Aggro. Not too much of a surprise there. Again, uh, the Mono Red deck is a little bit leaner, a little bit more efficient. Uh, its removal is a little bit faster, and Syrian Blood is a disaster for Mono Black. Oh, one heck of a magic card. Assuming your opponent cooperates with you, yeah, it's really good. Miriam hits an island off of the Nightville Spectre, and then does put that into play. And now he's going to go into the tank and see what he can figure out here. He's slowly chipping away, but those slow chip ways give Jim a lot of time. And, and again, Ross needs to win the game as quickly as possible because Supreme Ver Verdict is lights out. And he simply passes the turn back. This is going to be a Sphinx's revelation here. The question is for how many is it going to be? It's going to be only for two. Dave is going to try to work his way through Judge's Familiar again. Yeah, exactly. And this one seems to be worth countering. And so that's exactly what Miriam's going to do. And again, those Judge's Familiars aren't doing very much because of the Jace that's out there. Now, they would be a little bit better again if Miriam does draw a copy of Hall of Triumph. And it does reduce the devotion count for Master of Waves and Thassa. But countering Sphinx's Revelation is probably more important than anything. The big thing here is it now means that Ross's shields are down on Planar Cleansing. Mm -hmm. Before he could have fought over it, Jim plays the seventh land. And Ross can sacrifice the two judges of familiars. But now Planar Cleansing is also alive. Jay's going to take up. David's going to play an island. He's happy enough. He'll pass the turn back with the ability to revelate or cast a dissolve. As Miriam will untap, he will take a draw. And Ross needs to do some damage to that Jace this turn, at least one point. Otherwise, Jim gets to untap, go ultimate with Jace, find a Supreme Verdict or whatever else, and end the game from there. Yeah. Here are your attackers. The Jace triggers, of course, will make those into one power attackers. The question is, where are those guys going? I am in agreement with you. I believe he does actually have to attack Jace. If he doesn't, Miriam will be able to, oh, excuse me, Davis will be able to get a card from Miriam's deck. We can assume maybe a Nightfell Spectre, maybe a Master of Waves, who knows? And then Jim will be able to get maybe an Aetherling, maybe a Verdict from his side of the table. So This is a very logical division of attackers here. Ross still wants the Nightfell Spectre trigger, but he needs to do at least one point of damage to Jace, so the Clafin Raptor is going to go over there. Looks like Jim is going to let both of these things happen here. So Jason is going to tick down to seven. A Nightfell Spectre trigger will give Miriam a Temple of Enlightenment. Will will help him actually fix his draw for the next turn. So it's time to scry. We'll see if he finds what he likes after he does consult his hand. The one thing about playing against Mono Blue Devotion, if you're Davis, and because you have access to the deck list, you know that realistically Ross isn't holding counter spells. Yeah. That's not something he actually has to be worried about, which in most cases against a blue deck you would be concerned, but certainly not here. Especially since Sam Black popularized putting a couple syncopates in the main deck at the Invitational when he went 8 0, I believe, That's with correct. Mono Blue Devotion. So even though it's not the most popular thing, it's definitely on people's radars because probably the most public, most pronounced Mono Blue Devotion advocate has played Syncopate's main deck the last time he played in a large tournament. All Miriam can do is pass the turn back yet again. Davis looks like he wants to revelate, and it's going to be for four. 
And he knows the coast is clear again. No mana leak, no, no effect like that. No syncopate, as you did mention. So four cards and four life coming here for Davis. You have to imagine if he's able to find a Supreme Bird, he's probably doing okay. The thing that's actually pretty telling about this game, even though Miriam did mulligan to six, is that Davis hasn't needed a Supreme Bird this game. The way that Ross's draw was set up, Chase Architect, I thought, was nearly as bad. Yeah. And now an Aetherling is found by Davis. That might be bad news, too. Well, I'm not sure if Jim really wanted to draw the Aetherling. I'm, I'm sure he would have preferred to just get that off of Jace going ultimate, but it is nice, another nice tool to... Uh, to potentially win this game with, although I think Jim's going to stay away from it for a while. He's got better things to be doing. Sure. The last thing he wants to do is turn this game into any sort of damage race. Davis looking at a very, very full hand right now. For example, even that Azorius Charm does a lot of work. If Ross makes the same attack that he made last turn, Jim can just go ahead, Azorius Charm the Cloud Thin Raptor, and go ultimate with Jace the next turn. We could see him find an Elspeth then. Yeah. Something of that nature. Couple cards coming in for Davis, a last breath and a sink of pay for him. Again, what makes this deck so interesting by Jim is the fact that he does not have Detention Sphere or Banishing Light. You wonder how much of an edge that generated for him over the course of the Swiss rounds when people didn't know. Now he's working his way through the elimination rounds. Yesterday in the quarterfinals, he had a rematch against Corey Styles, his only loss in the tournament when Corey was playing Jun Monsters. Jim was able to overcome when Corey, if he didn't know then, he certainly knew in the top eight that he does not have Banishing Lights or Detention Spheres, and Jim was able to get him in two games, didn't even go three. And we are going to have to seriously reevaluate how we build our blue-white control decks for the Invitational, I think, if Jim's able to win this tournament, as he will have gone through a Gen Monsters opponent who knew that there was no Detention Spheres in the list, which significantly modifies how they sideboard. And if he beats Ross here in the matchup where Banishing Light and Detention Sphere is just pure upside, Mono Blue Devotion, then that's really telling about the way that his deck is constructed. Here's the attack again. Same as last turn. Nightfield Spectre going towards Davis. Cloudfin Raptor going towards Jace. And as you mentioned, you, and you see Jim looking at Azorius Charm. This might actually be a, a pretty good time to pull this off. Azorius Charm's the Raptor. Maybe last breath's it. Who knows? And it keeps his Jace at eight and might just go ultimate then. Yep. And he has Charm plus last breath, so he can try to fight both of Ross's creatures if he's feeling so inclined. And Jim says, you can draw that Nightfield Spectre again if you'd like. So that will take place, and now we might just see a last breath over here, or we'll just let this happen, so fair enough. Jim still respects the possibility of something like rapid hybridization. He's just not willing to play into anything right now. There's another knife Spectre. You see the dissolve there in Davis's hand. Does he have any interest in casting that? When you may want to save that for Thassa. Yeah, when you're looking at a last breath, too, it's hard to want to pull the trigger there. So it looks like that Nightfield Spectre is going to be good to go. Nick, though, is going to generate plus one mana at this point. Not sure that matters too much for Miriam in this situation, but you see he's going to add some more things to the board. There's a Tide Binder Mage. Now, if Miriam is smart, a Tide Binder Mage would have actually evolved Cloudfin Raptor because Jace actually made it to oh, a yeah. one power attacker, but. Looks like he may have missed that. And that interaction doesn't really seem all that intuitive, honestly. Yeah, you would assume that the Jace trigger only lasts through combat, but it lasts through the entire turn. So a missed opportunity there for Miriam to turn his Cloud from Raptor into actually a 3-4, kind of on accident. Mm -hmm. And it being a 3-4 is significant because it would mean he would start to make positive headway against this Jace instead of just treading water. Yeah. Davis does draw his card for the turn. You saw him use the last breath on the Night Vale Spectre. Hollowed Fountain in the hand right now. Are we taking Jace down maybe for the first time? Ah. Well, it still stays alive. And he is. All right. So what this means is he has no interest in trying to go ultimate here. Yeah. There's a last breath and an island and a dissolve. Still no Supreme Verdicts here for Jim. You have to imagine he's at least halfway through his deck and hasn't found one yet. Oh, for sure. I mean, there's a dozen cards in the graveyard, about a dozen cards in play. Huh. Last Breath and Nylon. Going to put the Dissolve to the bottom. But that just means that Miriam doesn't know about the Dissolve that's already in Davis's hand. So still saving that counter spell. And you have to imagine, again, he's holding that simply for Thassa, as yes. you mentioned.
No detention spheres, no banishing lights in this list, so he has to really respect that card. And now we do find out that the winner of this match is going to play against Mono Red. Gino Bautista slices and dices his way through John McCarthy very quickly. As far as seeding goes for the top eight matchups, Gino, I don't think, could be happier. Mono Black twice is not even reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's kind of crazy to even think about, given that Mono Black isn't even much of a, much of a player exactly. standard. And he played against it twice here in the top eight. Almost, you know, as close as I think Mono Red can get as far to buys. It, the matchup's very favorable for Mono Red. There's very few matchups I play on Magic Online where I'm like, this is going to be a total cakewalk. That is one of them. Yeah. So again, Gino Bautista moving on to the finals. Going to play against either Blue White Control or Mono Red Devotion. Excuse me, Mono Blue Devotion. I can't imagine he's too thrilled to play against either one, but you know, anything can happen. I don't mind the Blue White matchup. It is not great, but fine. The Mono Blue matchup is as good as Mono Black is for Mono Red. That's about how good Mono Red is for Mono Blue. Yeah. That is to say, very tough to win. Yes. Judges Familiar and Tide Binder Mage show up to the party here. Ross kind of reloading. And you see Davis, again, consult his hand and then shrug his shoulders, just saying, I, I don't really care about those cards all that much. And you see the two syncopates in Jim's hand. Those are actually relatively dead cards in this situation. The last breath certainly matters. Aether Link matters a little bit because that's the way the Jim is going to eventually close out the game. So he doesn't really have a lot of action. Again, the card that he's really looking for, maybe another Rev, um, maybe a Verdict just to clear things up. He may, err, again, err, just be erring on the side of caution here because he you know, has so many resources to work with. But I'm sure in Jim's mind, he's just trying to defend himself long enough to find one of those two cards you're referring to here. And the way the game's going, Elspeth is starting to qualify even as another haymaker. Well, Davis does draw a copy of Sphinx's Revelation for the turn. And that, of course, is a huge draw in this situation. Yes, he won't be able to get all of the cards and all of the life do that judge is familiar but one less is probably just fine here for the blue white control player he can start switching gears again if he wants to plusing jace he can also just plus jace and deploy aetherling which shuts down ross's entire offense there you do see the hollowed fountain that jim is considering playing again the hand a couple copies of syncopate still has it dissolved that he's been holding for some time now preparing to do battle against Thassa. Can't let that one resolve. And really, you know, what Jim is just doing here is he takes up Jace's. He just wants to make sure he doesn't do anything to lose himself the game. I believe he's in the driver's seat right now. For sure. A heavy favorite, just trying not to die. Tide Binder Mage into the red zone. You trigger the Jace. Davis is going to take one. He'll go down to six. There is a copy of Night Vale Spectre. Mary, I'm going to pass the turn back. Jim says, I would like to revelate for all but one, Mr. Judge is familiar. So that would be for five, and for Davis, that would be five life as well. So he's going to go up to 11. And we'll see if Jim can finally find that supreme verdict. Yeah, I think all it takes is one of those. You see a deicide. Still has not found one. Found a copy of Planner Cleansing, which is, it's fine. You know, it's not all that exciting. It's perfectly fine, though. But I, I, again, I don't think this is a situation where he needs to pull the trigger on Planner Cleansing, simply because his Jace is doing so much work here. Well, I still think the Night Vale Spectre represents some risk because it can find counter spells. Oh, okay, well, it looks like maybe he picked up a Supreme Verdict first draw step. You see Judge Familiar says, how about you pay one more? Jim says, how about I won't? Actually, Judge is Familiar, because you can't counter this anyway. But hey, good mechanics by yeah. Ross. You might as well try. The problem is, even if Jim screws up, it's not like <laughs> it really matters. It is <laughs> uh, what I like to call idiot proof. Right. Jace going to take up to seven here. Davis going to discard a couple of lands before passing the turn back over to Miriam, who will untap and take a draw. See if Ross has anything to reload with here. It looks like there might be another Nightfield Spectre. There is a Muta Vault. This is a Nightfield Spectre. Davis looks at his hand and he says, that's, that's fine, I suppose. Judge's Miller is fine as well. Jim will untap those lands. He will take a draw here. It's a copy of Muta Vault. Now it's just time to figure out how to close. Immuta Vault might be the lock here because it'll allow him to Planar Cleansing plus Jace block Ross's Muta Vault next turn. Well, let's, not for, let's not forget, Jim will lose his Jace. Oh, with the right, right, yeah. So he's off that plan. There is oh. Muta Vault, however. I, I think Planar Cleansing is still fine, but you can just do this. Yeah, this seems better. Yeah. 
Do you play in Aether League and really just take the opponent's chances away from winning? Looks like up goes the Jace. Also now, I think I believe that this forces Nightfall Spectre to actually just go after Jace. Yes. Because the ultimate is live. You've got Mutavault taken care of in multiple ways, and of course Judge is familiar. Well, it doesn't really do anything. And Jim has an Azorius charm for that. Nightfall Spectre as well. Well, Miriam says, I'm going to go after you. And Jim says, I'd prefer if you didn't. Ross says, you can have these back. I'm going to take these, and let's play a second game, shall we? Jim Davis does win game number one here over Ross Merriam. Blue-white control up a game over Mono Blue Devotion. Again, the winner of this match is going to play against Mono Red Aggro. As we do bring it back to the booth here early this morning, Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, Star City Games Open Series here in Providence, Rhode Island. It is trivia giveaway time. Six-month question is what he's got. I've got the rules, so get your Twitters open. Hashtag SCG Premium at SCG Live is who you're going to want to follow. Patrick will ask you a question for six months of premium. Use those hashtags on Twitter. And again, we'll announce the winner at the conclusion of our semifinal round. This match between Davis and Merriam is the last one we have to do. Um, and don't forget that all contests here with SCG Live are on us and has, we're no, no way affiliated with twitch.tv as far as yeah. the contests and the giveaways that we do. So this has been kind of the talk of the tournament here is Jim Davis's blue white control deck. He is has removed detention sphere and banishing light in, lo, in favor of more sweepers, yeah. including one six mana white sorcery, three copies in his, name, in his main deck, name that sorcery. And if you can, hashtag the answer, SCG Premium. Make sure you're following at SCG Live, and we will announce the winner of our six month premium giveaway at the conclusion of our semifinal round as we'll head back down to the match. And we will take a look at the sideboards here. It took Davis a long time to draw a copy of Supreme Verdict, but Jace, as, as things kind of panned out, was awesome that game. It saved. Uh, 1,000 points of damage and drew 10 cards or something, so. Not bad. It was not bad for Jim's four mana. Yeah, not bad for <laughs> one card. Uh, we'll look at Miriam's sideboard first. He's got a Claustrophobia, two copies of Domestication, a Dispel, two Dissolve, two Gainsay, two Negate, a Rapid Arborization, a Biden of Thassa, two Jace Architect of Thought, and a Jace Memory Adept. Now, when we've watched Ross play earlier, he's been playing against either Mono Black or Midrange Green decks, where those counter spells have been basically useless. Well, things change now. This is the matchup where Ross is going to convert into something closer to a counter sliver stack, where he's going to try to win the game with one or two threats and back them up with counter spells. To that end, he's going to be bringing in the counter spells, as you mentioned. He's going to bring in the additional copy of Biden of Thassa and the Planeswalkers to be much more durable against the sweepers that Jim is bringing to the table. On the other side of things, you see the options there for Davis. Two Archangel of Thune, two Celestial Flare, a Deicide, two Dispels, a Gainsay, a Last Breath, two Negate, two Renounce the Guilds, a Reprisal, and a Jace Memory Adept of his own. You have to remember when Alexander Hain won a Grand Prix a little bit earlier this year, Archangel of Thune was huge for him against Mono Blue. This is going to be the guessing game here, is the Archangel is very good against Mono Blue in a lot of spots, but it is a juicy domestication target. Mm -hmm. And both players, again, deck lists are public. So Archangel, I'm sure, is in Jim's sideboard in part for this matchup, but Ross knows it's there. Does Ross bring in domestication? Does Jim not bring in this Archangel, anticipating that Ross will bring in his domestication? So there's that sort of guessing game. I think he's going to want to renounce the guilds as well. It's not the most powerful removal spell, but it is additional removal. It can tag Night Vale Spectre in some spots, which is one of the more threatening cards that Ross can bring to the table. He's going to want the additional Last Breath and the Gainsay as well. I think he's going to bring in the second Deicide. Yeah. Very good against Thassa. Also can answer Biden. There, there's some targets here. Yeah, I think Deicide is very, very nice in this matchup. But I actually think that Deicide might be one of the reasons why Jim can get away with not playing Detention Sphere or Banishing Light. Now, I don't think that Jim built his deck with this matchup in mind because it was on such a, de uh, such a decline, excuse me. But the fact that he can Deicide a Thassa, and that answers the one that, that Ross draws, any that are in his hand, any that are in his deck, just taking away that option from Miriam, is really just huge because Thassa is so good against blue-white. It is a bit of a hedge there, although in that game, if Ross just went turn three Thassa, the game would have probably just ended. Much so different game. It's, it's not quite like Jim just has Thassa covered, but the main deck Deicide and then the additional one on the sideboard does give him a little bit of game. So we will see how both players through sideboard here. Again, the winner of this match is going to play against Gino Bautista, Mono Red Aggro. I'm sure it makes you happy. I'm pretty stoked. Aren't you happy? You and your red creatures in the finals. Pretty stoked. And pretty straightforward build of Mono Red there, too. Just a bunch of, uh, bunch of fours. It's a little bit bigger because it has Fanatic Amogus, but outside of that, nothing too crazy going on. 
The thing that's interesting to me about Gino's list is the four main deck Boros Reckoners. Not a card that I'm really that thrilled with in the current metagame. You know, Gino's mana base, 19 Mountain, 3 Meter Vault, so Boros Reckoners is not the most reliable thing to be casting. Mm -hmm. And it's a really juicy abrupt decay target. So that's not a card that I would be going out of my way to play right now. But if Gino really wanted to play with Fnatic of Mogus, which is legitimate, Fnatic is a pretty powerful card, then Boros Reckoner is just something you bring to the table. And there's some matchups where Reckoner is incredible. This is true. So whoever does win this one, We'll do battle against that. And, you know, the, what, what's kind of interesting here is I think that Marion would be happy playing against that deck. I think he's got a great matchup against Red. And I actually think that Jim would be okay playing against that deck because this isn't the fastest build of Mono Red I've ever seen. It's pretty quick. But when you have Wrecker and you have uh, Fnatic of Mogus, you're not that fast. Correct. Although that's another matchup where I'm sure Jim would love to tag out his planar cleansings for detention spheres. I would imagine that is the case. We have been saying that quite a bit over the course of the weekend, however. Well, not so, during the Swiss rounds. Not only was true. playing against Jun Monsters, it, it felt, and, and, and oddly enough, that was the match we had Jim on camera that he lost. Yeah. It felt like, you know, his opponent in part working with less than perfect information about how Jim's deck was constructed. And the fact that Planar Cleansing is just powerful against Jun Monsters in, in general meant that I like how Jim's deck was constructed for that matchup. Let's not forget next weekend. This is our last standard tournament before the Season 2 Invitational in Columbus, Ohio. Again, I believe that this tournament is going to have a huge impact on how people prepare. This topic was much different than anything we've seen over the last couple of weeks in Somerset and Indianapolis, for example. We we're looking at a mono blue devotion deck here as number one seed. We had two mono black aggro decks, a mono red deck in the finals. Davis with his unorthodox blue white control build, only one Jun Monsters deck. We didn't see any black devotion in the top eight. And heck, we even had a green white aggro deck as well. So yeah. this is a very different top eight. Very different and very aggressive. And if you're preparing for that tournament next weekend in Columbus, as I know many are, you have to imagine this has really thrown them for a loop. It has been the weirdest top eight in standard in months, in my opinion. Yeah, I got to agree. And right before one of the biggest standard tournaments of the year. <laughs> It'll be fun to see how people prepare. Yeah. And how they do get ready for the tournament now that we have seen what has basically changed people moving towards more aggressive decks. Now, is this just a one-week thing? Is this something that we should be doing as players moving forward? It's difficult to assess. I do think Mogus' Marauder is a legitimate card. It's very powerful, probably the most powerful enabler that Mono Black Aggro has. And it's a card that people need to start preparing for. It is quite good. Quite good. Merriam will be on the play here for game number two against Davis. You know, I, I typically expect, even though Jim doesn't have the normal build of blue-eye control, I still expect blue-eye control to win game number one. I think once Merriam does shift his deck into a counter Slivers-esque deck or counter cat if you're a new age player, then, you know, that's when things get more difficult. What is counter cat? Counter cat is a deck that Josh Utter-Layton got second at Pro Tour Philadelphia with. The oh. wild Mikado counter spell oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. deck. Okay, yes. Come on. Come on. I expect better from you. Well, I assume that it were, there's some sort of counter cat tribal deck because Slivers is a tribal deck. That's fair. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll let you off the hook this time. There weren't like a lot of counter spells in this deck, but there were enough. Yeah, counter Slivers was, you know, that's, there's a lot of counter spells in that deck. See, but I'm sure that most of our viewers, they don't. How many people do you think know about the counter slivers? A crystalline sliver? We have to Ross look at those horrible. We have to look at those horrible slivers now. Ross literally has a sliver in his deck already. He's bringing is, it back. That is actually true. You have saved yourself. Mm -hmm. Well done. Well done. If we're being technical, he has five slivers in his deck. Well, no, because those are lands. Those are that sliver. are slivers. Well, not really. It's not a sliver in the tagline. I mean, not really. Rosk has creature dash sliver in his deck. I wonder how much that Gale Rider sliver has done for him this weekend. Uh, I can't imagine it. It has done very much, <laughs> but it is a necessary evil slash just supplemental threat. You need to do something on turn one. That's all that this is about. I think it would be sweet if he's just like, oh, come on, he drew a game Silver to give his Mutaval flying for the win yeah. for the last two points of damage. That would be a tough way to go if you're the opponent. Well, no. Ross got, got paid off for the way that he built his deck. You certainly don't want the second Gale Rider Sliver. That's true. They are on diminishing returns. Miriam is happy with his beginning seven. Davis will take a look at his. And we will see if we're going to be underway in just a moment here. He's giving a long look to that hand. You see a Supreme Verdict. You also see a Planner Cleansing. Jim, I believe, looking at his warrior skill kit as his first land. Trying to sculpt things in his mind right now. Miriam kept his hand pretty quickly. 
And Davis will keep, so we're underway. Miriam with just an island. Davis going to play a copy of Azorius Guild. Get past the turn back over to Ross, who will take a draw. This is just a land and a pass, so not very aggressive out of the gate here for Miriam. And it's likely Ross has cut a fair number of his one mana creatures. Sure. This is a Hollow Fountain tapped, passing the turn back over to Miriam, who will draw a card. We'll see if he's got a three. You have to imagine he will, and it's a good one there in Nightfell Spectre. Now we'll see if Ross is able to protect this threat. Jim could really use something like Last Breath right now. Davis picked up a Mutavolt for the turn. You see his hand is pretty expensive. He's got a Divination hiding out over there. A Sphinx's Revelation, a Cleansing, a Jace. Can't forget about that Supreme Verdict as well. A few lands to play. We'll see if he does want to cast Divination this turn or not, because if he does, he would have to discard. And let's see if Ross is now able to execute his plan here. Because this Night Veil represents a threat just on its own that Ross is capable of winning the game with. Absolutely. It's no Ribbon Snake, but... What is? This, this is true. And Davis just passed the turn back. No interest in discarding. Now, what I find interesting about that is because I think that Jim's mana might be tied up for the next couple of turns of the game between Jason and Verdict. So maybe you're supposed to pick your spot there and just divide and then have to discard a card. But then again, maybe not. You see Hollow Fountain, the card's drawn there for Miriam. Off the Night Veil Spectre. Davis goes down to 18. It's possible that there's also just too many threatening fours in Ross's deck where Jim needs to keep up the illusion of there being a counterspell, all other things being equal. Biden of Thassa and Jace Architect of Thought are really bad for Jim in that spot, so uh, if he was close to divinating, the fact that he has to respect Ross's fours maybe le leads him towards just holding up mana. Miriam just puts a Howl Fountain in play, tapped and passed to the turn back again because both players have access to each other's deck list. Jim knows exactly what's up here for Miriam, mm -hmm. which is, all right, you're going to try to stick a threat, potentially two, and then hold up a counter wall, and I have to work my way through that counter wall. Now, I don't know if you have the counter spells or not. I don't know which ones you have because you just got a couple of copies, of, you know, a couple two ofs but I have to work my way through this shield. Well, the total sum of the counters in Ross's deck is substantial. Yes. He has, he has quite a few. And you can see that Miriam knows exactly the plan that he's trying to execute here with these counter spells, which is just play a threat and pretty much try to protect it. Now, Supreme Verdict makes things a little bit difficult because it can't be countered, and here is a Verdict to take care of a Spectre. But if you're Miriam, I imagine you're, you're okay with that exchange. And this is the contrast in the, the way that Ross's deck is set up game one versus post board. Game one, Supreme Verdict is, would have been unbeatable at any spot had Jim drawn it. And this game is just a one for one. Ross still has a full hand of cards. Miriam taking a look at the grip. He does have a land to play. It is an island. Let's see what he's going to follow this up with. Just another copy of Nightfield Spectre before passing the turn back. Turn looks very much the same as Davis will untap those lands. He will take a draw. It is a Mutavault. Jim drawing quite a few lands here. Does make you wonder when he's going to fire off that Divination. You assume he has to pretty soon. Well, now he is up to eight cards. Divination puts up to nine. I think he's he's trying to avoid discarding to hand size if he can, if he can be helped. Again, also, Jim has the incentive of just trying to keep up the appearances of him having a dissolve. Sure. Looks like he may play a Mute Evolve, and he does. Here is a Divination. So, time to peel two, five cards in hand, so he'll go up to seven. And Miriam considering countering this, maybe. Or at least bluffing a counter spell. Yeah. I would be hard pressed, and it'd be difficult for me to imagine Ross countering a Divination. I see Davis just dropped two lands, an island and an Azorius Guild game. Yeah, those counterspells are really just the most valuable tool that Ross has in the matchup. He's not going to throw them away for very little. Davis already did play his land for the turn, so he simply passes the turn back to Miriam. Miriam will take a draw here. I feel Spectre ready to come into the red zone. That's where Ross will start. Davis going to go down to 16. Trigger from the Night Veil will give Miriam an Elspeth Suns champion. And keep in mind, he does have a white source in play from Davis. Island for the turn. Does he want to commit anything else? The answer is yes, a Jace Architect of Thought. And still holding up two the whole way. Yep. He will tick up Jace. No interest in minusing that right now. We'll pass the turn back over to Davis. And let's keep in mind, too, ultimating Jace is a real plan here in this matchup for me. For Marianne. sure. 
I mean, Jim cannot really be spending his mana and resources trying to ta attack down this Jace's this Muta Vault, so it's going to be in play for a while. Archangel of Thune, the draw here for Davis, a real game breaker in this matchup. Now again, if you're Davis, you have to be very cautious because you're trying to play through these counter spells. Does he want to have five mana on his own turn to try to resolve this Archangel? Well, it, the counter spells that, that Ross has access to for this amount of mana do not touch the Archangel. It's Dispel, Gainsay, and Negate, so this is safe. The bigger risk is what happens if Ross has brought in Domestication? And now we'll see how this de guessing game comes to a head here because both deck lists are public. Ross knows about Archangel and Jim knows about Domestication. Archangel of Noon plus and Azorius Guildgate was the play there from Davis. Does Miriam have the Domestication? Does he, need that, does he need to take down Jace to try to find it? You saw the game plan that Miriam was trying to use and it was working fairly well, but it looks like some things have changed here for Ross. For sure. Down to three goes Jace. Couple of cards coming. A Nykthos, another Night Vale Spectre, and a Negate. None of those are domestication. We'll see how Miriam wants to, excuse me, Davis splits these. All three of these cards are, are fairly threatening. Although, assuming that the Archangel is good right now, Night Vale Spectre is much less threatening. Yeah, and Jim, Jim values Negate the most highly of all. And apparently so does Ross. So that's what he will take. Other cards, of course, going to the bottom of the deck. Nightfell Specter and Nick Those. Miriam has not played land yet, but he will right now. Four mana here. This uh -oh. may be a Biden. This may be a domestication or just a master of waves. And a good one. You see the, the devotion count of six. So six elementals are gonna head Miriam's way. And what he's doing now is he's forcing the hand of Davis of, all right, well, you better have some sort of, of removal spell. And we know that Miriam has a negate here. And if Jim has Supreme Verge, he doesn't have enough mana to, left over to even attack down the chase. So uh -huh. that's still a threat that Russ gets to keep. So a whole bunch of elementals, excuse me, are gonna show up to the party and pressure Davis here. So even though Archangel has resolved, Ross trying to put Davis in a difficult situation. And all he can do is pass the turn back over to Jim, who will untap those lands. He will take a draw here with just Dark Angel in play. We know the Planner Cleansing's in grip, and he picks up an island for the turn. I'm curious to see if Jim goes after Jace with his Archangel here, if Ross is willing to chump block. Because Jim is not necessarily dead to this board. I mean, he can attack the Jace. That either compels a jump block with the Night Vale Spectre or Jim loses the, or Ross rather loses his chase. Jim wants so he can even grow the Muta Vaults with the Archangel trigger on the stack. So even though Ross's board has a, a lot of stuff on it, it's not, it's not enough to just win the game on its own, even just based on what Jim has on the board. Yeah. And Jim, of course, has seven cards in his hand, so. When we watched Ross play against Green White Aggro, this kind of setup was just game over. Uh, against Jim, it's a much harder slog. Though, of course, negate complicates things significantly. Absolutely. And now it's time, it looks like, to do a little bit of math. If you're Jim Davis, trying to figure out what he needs to play towards. He knows his opponent has negate. So that planner cleansing is realistically shut off, but it could be a test spell. This could also be a test spell. This looks to be a Jace, maybe. And it is. Do you have any interest in countering this, Mr. Merriam? You see Ross go to his hand. Again, we know about the negate. And Jim can't really follow up with anything too devastating here. Three mana is not a significant flashpoint for his deck. Jace starts at four. The question is, where does it go? Elevator can go down, maybe find Davis some more cards, or Elevator can go up and slow down those elemental tokens. It's gonna go down, so a couple of cards coming here for Jim. Deicide is one, Divination is two, Deicide is three. This feels like two Deicides versus Divination split to me. What it feels like to me as well, and that's what it's gonna be. Now Davis has to take a look at his hand again. 
And if you do a deicide count in Jim Davis's deck, what you'll find is that there's one in the main and one in the board. So if he puts both of those to the bottom of his deck and Athasa shows up, it's not going anywhere. Yep. Divination going to go to the grip. Deicide's going to go to the bottom. <laughs> I'm sure Jim would have loved to have one of those DSIs as insurance, but the way the game is going, he just doesn't have that kind of wiggle room. There's an island. And will we fire away on the divination here? <laughs> Looks like Archangel's going to come in. We'll see where it wants to go. I have to imagine this is going at Jace. Three points of damage to Ross at the spot means very little. And to Jace it does go. I see Miriam considering blocking with Knife Specter to save his Jace, or he may just let it go, and he does. So Archangel will gain a little bit of life. Gonna put Davis up to 19. Gonna put a counter on that. Looks like he's gonna activate Mutavolt as well. Let's see if he has any interest in activating the other one here. I think, like he wants, answers, no. I think he just wants that Mutavolt back on defense. Yeah, fair enough. A 3-3 matches up very nicely against Ross's board right now. And not only does that take care of a creature, but it also stops Master Waves from attacking. Yeah. So it's actually pretty good there. Davis simply going to pass the turn back. Again, you see that he's kind of tiptoeing around the gate, trying to figure out, all right, what spell does Ross want to counter? Now, the one card that Jim, if he draws it, of course, the Supreme Verdict, which the gate can't touch. Mm -hmm. But the planner cleansing that he has in his hand right now might not even be that interested in casting because he has an active Archangel and Jace out there, but Negate will certainly take care of that. That's the problem here. This Archangel on its own is going to compel Ross to add a lot more to the board, mm -hmm. and Supreme Verdict could just be game over. Even if Jim, all Jim has left over is his Muta Vaults. Well, you see Miriam organize those creatures. The one horse in front, I think he knows that one's going to die to Muta Vault. Mm -hmm. So now you might be trying to figure out, all right, how do I send towards Jace? How do I work your life total? Master of Waves is off to the side now, so I don't think that's coming in. I mean, Ross could just send two of the horses at Jace and everything else at Jim. Jim only has one block. With the, with the man available, he has a block or a last breath. And even in the case of last breath, Ross can simply negate it if he's worried about it. Well, Nightfell Spectre's going somewhere. It looks like Elementals are going over there. And it looks like the creatures off to the side are attacking Davis. And the creatures over at Jace are, of course, attacking Jace. Yeah, this is a pretty straightforward attack here. What'll be really interesting is to see what Miriam finds from the Nightfell Spectre. Davis will activate Muta Vault, which is a 3-3. So he will take care of one of those Elementals. Davis is going to end up taking eight and losing his Jace here. That is is a Temple of Enlightenment, and that is the second white source for the Elspeth. What makes Elspeth very interesting in this situation is Elspeth can kill the Archangel. Yeah. And Ross is going to be able to play it next turn with Negate back up, mm -hmm. I believe. I feel Spectre, one heck of a magic card. In some percentage of games. Sometimes it's just nonsense, but in games like this, it is pretty awesome. Miriam, as he did not play his land yet, will play Temple of Enlightenment. Take a look at the top card. See if he finds anything he likes. Woo! To the bottom it goes. And Ross can create quite a wall for this Elspeth, too, after the fact. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But Elspeth is going to be great. The question is, what else does Miriam have in his hand? You see the Jace right now. We know about the Negate. It looks like he may want to deploy another copy of Jace. That looks to be the answer. So there is Jace. He's going to spin down. Mutavolt, Thassa, and an island. Let's keep in mind with this Thassa, Ross knows that both those deicides are on the bottom of the deck. Uh -huh. He knows that's the way that Jim gets rid of it. Now, I don't think he'll tap out for Thassa this turn. No. He wants to leave up that counterspell. Davis, gonna untap some lands here now. 
Ross has put him in a pretty difficult situation, coming from a lot of different angles. And that's what he's trying to do post-board. He can't be all in on just the creature plan. Planner cleansing number two with a draw here for Davis. See Jim looking at that divination. It might be time, you could argue, to throw this first planner cleansing away. I think there's an argument for him to try to set up a Sphinx's Revelation at the end of Ross's turn, too. This is true. Archangel might be forced to get Jace off the table now. Maybe a Mutavolt just takes care of it and Archangel hangs back on D. A lot of options here for Jim. Yeah, Ross is probably not jump blocking with Master of Ways to keep his chase around. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're better served uh, attacking with the Archangel because there's no guarantee you even get to block with the next turn because of the Elspeth. That's true. That's true. The heavy white element of, uh, of Jim's deck and the fact that it's sorceries and creatures help a lot here against Ross's counter sweep. As he's on gainsay to spell, it's three of his seven counters at least. I wonder if Jim's just removed a lot of the counters from his own deck too, in part because of the risk of Night Veil Spectre connecting. I think also the reason he could do it, a reason he could do that is because he was on the uh, he was on the draw this game too. Mm -hmm. Might not line up appropriately. I could certainly see that being the case. A couple cards coming here for Davis from this divination. You see a Muta Vault and a Sphinx of Revelation as a draw. Again, I think the draw that Jim is really looking for it now, Supreme Bird, yet again. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah. <laughs> the importance of that card in this matchup, it's so high. Yeah. Let's see what Davis wants to do now. I mean, imagine, I, I'm imagining that the Archangel has to go after Chase again. Well, he's going to reach him. And there goes Chase. So Davis is going to gain four life. The triggers Archangel. He's going to fire up, it looks like, this Muta Vault. So now they'll both be three threes. And he just wants as many three threes as possible because Ross is just attacking him with two power creatures. Yeah, slow down those master wave tokens. And Miriam does point out the trigger for the Archangel, so. And Davis has not played a land just yet. He can play an untapped lands and have planes. And have these mutables back on defense. And what those will effectively do is kill two, kill two attackers and stop Master Wave from attacking as a result. Mm -hmm. So now Miriam's going to untap all these creatures and all those lands. You see the Frostbird word in his hand? He will take a draw. We know about the Negate. We know about Thassa as well. We He's... also know that Jim is without his deicides. Mm -hmm. These sideboard games, they will not be quick. No. That will not happen here. There's a lot of posturing. Mono Blue can't kill very quickly after sideboard with how Ross has his deck and his configuration. And Jim certainly can't kill very quickly, even under ideal circumstances. Yeah. Miriam looks like he's going to go reach in here. And he says, I don't have any interest in attacking with Master of Waves. Thank you. So just Nightfall Spectre. None of the elemental tokens. Here's a trigger. This, ooh, boy. Ooh. That is a dispel. And now if Jim was trying to plan to set up Sphinx's Revelation as a test spell, that is no longer an option. That plan is off. Here's Elspeth. That is going to take down and take care of the Archangel. This is where things get really hard now because Miriam has Negate plus Dispel mana. We know he has Negate in his hand. He's got a spell underneath the Spectre. 
and Jim might just have to try to slog through these counters the hard way. Just cast Planar Cleansing, say go. But Jim's light toll is also fairly low at this point, too, so spending mana that way is rough. What's really interesting, again, is that if Jim draws Verdict, things change so much. He Verdict's away this board. He fires a Mutavolt to take care of Elspeth. Mm -hmm. He's actually doing really good then, but he's not been able to find Supreme Verdict. Now, Last Breath will take care of those Elemental Tokens, so he may have effectively done the same thing. But then again, you know, Verdict can't be countered, and this certainly can be, so... I mean, Jim did find one Supreme Verdict this game, but to Ross's credit, Ross's game plan forced him to use it just on Nightfield Spectre on turn four. Mm -hmm. And it felt like then that if you're Miriam, you had to be happy with the exchange. Yeah. Jim has four aces in his deck. It's those, those four Supreme Verdicts. Anytime you get him to trade it for only one card, you have to count that as a victory. Jim's going to do some math now. And again, this could just be posturing here, bluffing, something of that nature, doing a lot of math and counting. I believe that he's obviously working through his decisions, but Miriam doesn't know the cards in his hand, has been provided with that knowledge. So he doesn't know about the cleansings that are there. The thing is, Jim needs to sculpt out the next three or four turns. Oh, yeah. Because he needs to, at the end of all of this, he probably needs to get a planar cleansing to resolve. Mm -hmm. So he needs to find a way to test spell Ross and put pressure on him on different angles to ultimately try to get a planar cleansing to resolve. Not the easiest thing to do. As good as cleansing is, and as good as it probably has been for him in this tournament, it is a six mana wrath effect. Yeah. A six mana wrath effect against mono blue devotion is not the best place to be. Would he have preferred to simply detention sphere away that Night Veil Spectre? Quite possibly. There's Negate to take care of that. Davis just passes the turn back over to Miriam. Miriam will take a draw here in just a moment. Again, we do know about the Thassa. That is in Ross's hand. And now with Jim having access to just one copy of Mutavault on defense, it wouldn't surprise me if he were willing to send his elementals into the Mutavault. Miriam is going to play a Thassa pre-com, but he's going to make his Master Waves unblockable, and everybody's coming into the red zone. So you see the math here, how much damage is going to come across. Looks like an 11 spot. Mm-hmm. Mutavault's going to go live. It's going to block something. Ross is ready for damage. And Jim is going to use this mana to cast the last breath on something. <laughs> but Jim knows it's going to be countered, yeah. so that doesn't matter. Get past that point in the game. So all this damage will be dealt. Davis is going to go down to one, trigger this. Zorius Guildgate underneath the Spectre. Miriam has not played Lady this turn, so the Guildgate will come into play. Elspeth is going to take up three soldiers here in just a moment. And you'll notice among all those tap permanents, there are three that are untapped. An island, a Temple of Enlightenment, and a Hollowed Fountain. That represents a counterspell. And I caught a glimpse of Ross's hand. He does have one in Dissolve. Dissolve might be too much for Jin to beat this game. Well, without a Supreme Verdict, the answer is, I believe, yes. I think even with Supreme Verdict, he would be in some trouble. Yeah. Now that Thassa is in play. This is true. And Davis is going to go reaching for this mana here. He wants to set up a Mutavault attack. Here's a Planner Cleansing. There's a Dissolve. Jim will take a look at his hand, and he's going to pick up his permanence. Ross Merriam's going to win game number two, and excellently played game number two to his credit, and we'll head to a third one. The game plan right there for Mono Blue Devotion. Never extended too far into sweepers. Had counter spells to protect him from the worst thing that Jim could do, and Jim was just never able to extract much value. You know, he's not able to Supreme Verdict and kill multiple creatures. It's going to be hard for him to resolve Fix's Revelation because Ross has so many counters to fight over that. A lot of Jim's best tools just don't work the same way in games two and three as they worked in game one. You do see the sideboards here for both players. Don't know how much is going to change on the play or the draw. Yeah, but you see them both going back to the drawing board and analyzing the deck lists here to see if there's anything that can help them or changes for them. I'm curious if Jim brought in the Renounce the Guilds. We saw him go through a fair amount of his deck there without seeing one, but Renown seems very good against Ross in this matchup. It is a cheap, efficient removal spell that answers one of the more troubling cards in the matchup, which is Night Veil Spectre. Yeah. 
Does, it's not going to answer Nightvale Spectre 100% of the time, of course. Ross could muck it up with Judges Familiar or Frostburn Weird, but there's enough targets to make Renounce a desirable sideboard card, in my opinion. As these players do finish up sideboarding, we will resume play in just a moment here. Again, the winner of this match will play against Gino Bautista, but we do want to talk to you guys about our newest addition to the Creature Collection series. There is the little acorn mystic. Look at that guy. Hard to say no. Hard to say no. You got a play mat, you've got a dice bag, you've got a deck box, you've got sleeves, and of course, two Acorn Mystic tokens with every entry to our Legacy Open Series events beginning June 13th. That's next weekend when we are in Columbus for the Season 2 Invitational. It'll be fun. I love seeing these things come out. I can't wait to see what the next part of these will be. Of course, we're wearing our Squirrel Storm pins, mm -hmm. so I imagine that these will probably become a pin at some point as well. Yes. So that'll be fun. So definitely check out the Creature Collection. You guys can buy these again beginning June 13th on StarCityGames.com or any Star City Games Open Series event that you do attend. A fine addition to the Star City Games Zoo. We do have a little zoo here, Basically, don't we? a little animal park. Yeah, I like it. And yeah, we talked about this yesterday. I think uh, the hippo line is what I'm going to talk to uh, the powers that be at Star City. Yeah, a, a big-eyed, bushy-cheeked hippopotamus ripping a boat of Taurus full... Uh, of <laughs> A boat full of Taurus into two as they sink into the water, terrified, would be an awesome token. That'll be hippo size. Hippo size. That's what that card would be With called. buyback. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it. I'll have to talk to you again the powers that beat yeah, the hippo I'm not an line. artist. I, I qualify all this. I'm not an artist. <laughs> but I do have a creative vision where I believe I could give the template to our artists and then create some pretty awesome stuff. Yes, a hippo attacking a boat is what I would like. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The humans need to look terrified. <laughs> <laughs> they may also be wide-eyed and bushy-cheeked. Oh, much like the hippo. That's exactly. nice. That's nice. Really opening up the flavor there. I like yeah. that. All I can do is give the inspiration. Has there ever been a giraffe in Magic? I, I imagine, I would assume Mirage had one. Yeah, I think, yeah, I guess that would be the case. I would guess. I know there have been elephants, of course. Oh, all sorts of elephants. My favorite being, I believe, the rogue elephant. Rogue Elephant's not bad. I like War Elephant a lot. What does that one do? Is it banding? Arabian, the Arabian Nights one. The banding? Yeah. Trample banding. Nice. Which is not a great synergy because I don't think it grafts keywords on the things that it bands with. Which oh, is if just... you'd like to spend a few minutes explaining, explaining banding, by all means. I, we don't have that much time. I implore you. We do not have that much do time. Do whatever you'd like. I'll give you as much mic time as you need. So you can make a band with, on offense with any number of creatures with banding and w up to one non-bander. When your opponent blocks a band, you are allowed to sign damage as you wish amongst your band. Keywords are not grafted unless they are shared by all creatures, which means that if I attack you with two banding creatures with flying and one non-flyer, you may block with your non-flyer. On defense, you may band one bander with any number of non-banders and block as one unit and distribute damage again amongst your blockers as you wish. There's also about a dozen other smaller nuanced part of these rules. Uh, it's really the only it's really the only fatal error in, in alpha, I think, is banding appearing at common. Richard Garfield and his team showed a pretty mature understanding of game design in a number of elements throughout that set. Banding at common is a failure because it is really hard to explain. Yeah, I, don't really, I don't really even know what you just said as far as those banding rules go. Those were in one ear, out the other. So you attack as a group. Oh, we're going to do this again. Well, the simplified version <laughs> oh, of it. Okay. You attack as a group. You can have one non-bander in a group. Any no number of banders may be in a group, only one non-bander. Okay. When your opponent blocks, instead of normally your opponent assigns damage however they want to, you assign damage amongst your team. What ends up happening oh, okay. with banding is that none of your creatures ever die, and all of your opponent's creatures just die. So combat. banding was just busted. It was completely busted. Okay, nice. Yeah. Nice. Because you could also assign, it's, you know, if you block my band with a 7-7, seven, seven, I can say, put all 7 damage on my 1-1, one, one, and that dies. And if you block my band with a 5-5, five, five, I can go, I'll put 2 damage on my 3-3, three, three, and I'll put 3 damage on my 4-4, four, four, and nothing dies. Ah, yes. And this is back when no one had any idea how to play Magic, so banning was just, don't bother blocking, all your creatures are dead, and don't bother attacking, because again, all your creatures are dead, and none of, none of mine are dead. So I think we should bring banding back. Enough of this constellation nonsense. Yeah. Give me some banding. It is really hard to figure out. 
both from a rules perspective and then in practice. Between that and Rampage, I remember that. Well, Rampage is uh, Rampage is pretty simple to explain. If there's any mechanic in magic that needs to be punished, it is double blocking and triple blocking, because it happens all the time, and it's really frustrating. So Rampage means that your guy survives double and triple blocks. Oh, OK. Fair enough. I, I'm trying to think of the R&D conversation that led to Rampage. Some guy just keeps losing to this guy's double block deck. He's just so frustrated. No more. I just wish I had some creatures to go to when I play against the double block deck. Problem solved. Here's a craw giant. Yeah, here's a car. Wrathy Berserker, or whatever that guy's name is. A very fast mulligan for Jim and yeah. for Ross. So neither player happy with their seven. They're going to go down to six here. I think Craw Giant is, like, is my go-to Rampage card. I think it's the... I can't remember the, the first name. I think it's Wrathy, but the Berserker. He was triple red two for a two three with Rampage three. He was a turd. But <laughs> back in the day, he was extremely popular and actually fairly expensive, all things told. He was something like an eight or a ten dollar uncommon. Nice. I had one of them in my deck. It was not very good. But it was on a Rampage. It was. Rathy Berserker. Rathy Berserker. Berserker. Look at you. Mm -hmm. Could not, could not tell you my own blood type, but I do have all these. <laughs> I do have all these memories from my childhood. I do generally enjoy that Craw Giant is very difficult to cast at three colorless green, 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 green. Well, a seven mana six four. If you, you know you want to give people the tools to beat the triple block deck, but you don't want them to make them so easy that they're all over the place. Ah, so they have a cost. Right. Okay. A seven mana six four trample rampage two. Yeah. Nice. That is one I played with many a time at the kitchen table back in the day. Uh, Marhel Els Dragon was another guy that I had. I think Never he was a rampage. I think he's a rampage one guy. Okay. Um, he was pretty sweet, but he just had halfway decent stats for his mana. By which I mean it was like a six mana gold four five or some such. Oh, okay, sure. But back in the day, it was those that, were real stats. That was back in the day. yeah. Was it Shivan Dragon or Fat Modi? No, but those were. Ten dollars, so, yeah. and Marhel Els Dragon was less because <laughs> he was in Chronicles. So the Modi, ah, man. memories. The Modi was one of my favorite cards back in the day. Maha Modi Dejin, six mana, five six flyer. Yeah, game over. Hey, you, it, you can't win, opponent. Yeah, good luck. And that card actually continued to show up to com in competitive Magic all the way into the two thousands. Yeah, there were various, you know, mono blue tempo strategies that played Maha Modi Dejin to beat fires. Simpler times. The best of days. Pretty good days now, though. Yeah. Mary and Dave is going to take a look at their six cards. Creatures are better, spells are worse. Yeah. That's probably for the best. After playing with uh, you know some of those throwback standard decks yesterday, spells were <laughs> absurd. Yeah. Here's a judge's familiar to begin things for Miriam. Again, both players here on six cards. Davis, you see, with the planes. He has a divination. He has a last breath. So he may be forced to last breath this Judge's Familiar simply so he can, if he does draw a land, he can cast Divination. That's exactly what he's going to do. Get that thing off the table. Jim's hand has a really nice curve if he finds a third land. He gets to Divinate and then start casting stuff. So uh, that Judge's Familiar messes up a lot of things. He did not draw the land, however. All he can do is pass the turn back over to Miriam. Miriam draws a card. He plays Nylon. This is Night Veil Spectre, much like what we saw last game. Davis will draw another copy of Supreme Verdict. Well, he's got plenty of those. He doesn't even have an Azorius charm in his hand. He has nothing to protect himself from this Nightfail Spectre. In for two. Trigger. A land, of course. So insulting. Yes. A lock of the century. Now here are Jace's. Miriam going to take this down. He wants cards. He wants them now. An island, a Jace, and a Frostburn Weird. Oof, huh? Jace is on its own. And oh, yeah. Miriam's going to take that, knowing that he can cash in his other Jace. And then play a replacement, Jason, the next turn. Davis takes a draw. This is a land. It had to be planes. this turn for Jim to have any chance. I still suspect too much damage might be done here, especially if Ross can minus his Jason and then cast his other Jace mm -hmm. next turn. Divination, going to draw Davis two cards. D aside and a Temple of Enlightenment. Jim looking at his hand. Do I have to discard? The answer is no. Merriam is going to untap. He will take a draw. Easiest place to begin might be attacking, and it will be in with the Nightfail Spectre and in with the Mutavault. What this means is Miriam has no interest in cashing in his Jace to play the other Jace. An island here, 
and Azorius Guildgate there. Jace will tick up, and Marion will represent Counter Magic. Over to Davis we go. Ross must have quite the hand and not even be interested in Jace in this spot. Muta Volt the draw here for Jim. Can't cast Supreme Verge. We saw him cast it somewhat in this situation last time to take care of a Night Veil Spectre, and he might be forced to do so again. I don't think his hand lets him really do anything else, but uh, again, this is another highlight to how the matchup changes post-board, where the Supreme Verdict is something that Ross, it's still bad for Ross in a lot of spots, but he at least has a game plan he can sculpt to try to beat the card. There's the Muta Vault for Jim, and there's the Verdict. Not too much of a surprise, again, I think his hand is forced to do that. Miriam again with a lot of cards in his hand and Actor Jason. We can't forget about the Muta Vault among those lands. He will take a draw here. So I'll pick up an island for the turn. How does he want to begin here? Well, I think he wants to resupply with at least one creature this turn. He's going to start with a Jace. So a couple cards coming. You see a Thassa, an island, and a Frostburn Weird. Thassa versus is the split and a quick one there from Davis. Miriam will take the god of the sea, put the others to the bottom. And this might be a little bit of trapping from Jim, as I believe he has Deicide in hand. That is accurate. So he may want Ross to actually take this Thassa. There's an island. You see Miriam's hand again. Even though he is ahead and he would like to press his advantage, he can't get reckless. Yes. You know, he, needs, he still needs to play the same game that he did last game, which is you know, pace the game in such a way that the counter spells are absolutely backbreaking. And I don't think Ross is getting ahead of himself here. I think he's aware of Jim can definitely come back from this spot. Decisions, decisions from Ariam. He's already played his land for the turn. You see, he's trying to figure out the best way to go about pacing this game. He did a great job of it in game number two, and it looks like he's going to put the God of the Sea into play with mana available to counter things. Although I do, I do want to go back to two turns ago. Now, knowing that Jim doesn't have access to Detention Sphere or Banishing Light in his list, what are his outs? In the turn where Ross pl plus the Jace up to three, what if he just cashes in the Jace and slams Jace five and starts doming Jim's deck? What are the odds that Jim can get out of that? I believe very low. Just, just hitting him with the mill 10 over and over yeah. until it's over. And then just basically what he can do is he can just continuously mill 10 and then just protect himself with counter spells. Correct. Yeah. I mean, how many times does he have to mill? Uh, five is definitely a win, and four probably gets it done. Yep. Now, Ross clearly has a different plan he's going for, but uh, I question whether or not this was just the easier path. Temple of Enlightenment will be what Jim plays for his land. He'll take a look at an Elspeth. I don't think that one has much of an effect on the game right now. It's hard to put Elspeth away because it's so powerful. Well, it's not castable is part of the problem, yeah. too. I mean, Jim can cycle the Azorius charm in his hand, but... Might want to use that in a different way. Correct. You can see a difficult decision here for Davis, but it looks like that one's going to go towards the bottom, and it will. I think that's correct. I don't think he can, he can hold on to Elspeth in this spot. Davis may be considering Fire Muta Vault to take down that chase. Then again, maybe not. He's just going to pass the turn back. Miriam will trigger Thassa's scry. And you see the Devotion is at three, two for the Jace, one for the Thassa. It only takes two more, which you know that Mono Blue Devotion is very good at providing. Marion puts the top card to the bottom. He draws a card. It is a Frostburn Weird, so there's the two blue he's looking for. It's also very convenient here for Miriam that he can play a Frostburn Weird and still leave up five mana for Counter Magic. And so much. And here comes Santa Claus. An attempt an Azorius charm to put Thassa back on top of the deck. And Jim's trying to do a little baiting here where I think he assumes Ross will fight over this, and then maybe he can get his Deicide to resolve. Mm 
Ross not going to have that fight, though. Let's Jim win this war. Up goes Jace. Man with a couple of cards in his hand again. Davis does know about the five mana Jace mm -hmm. in Miriam's hand that he has to be certainly worried about. Jace memory adept. Davis is going to draw a card for the turn. Again, we put Elspeth on the bottom, so this is a mystery card. It's a pretty good one, an untapped island. Certainly a much better draw in this turn than Elspeth would have been. Oh, so. yeah. You see, we're over an hour into this match. These two have been battling. Players filing in for our Legacy Open right now should be well attended here in the Providence area. And it'll certainly be a lot of fun to watch, too. For sure. New England's got a lot of just, a lot of old school gamers, a lot of really high quality Magic players. And if we think our Standard Open is having a huge effect on the Invitational, I imagine this Legacy one will, too. Yeah. Although that's, Legacy's a slightly different animal because Let's imagine that I got the cards for Red White Painter and then decided I want to play Reanimator at the last minute. I may not have the $3,500 or whatever <laughs> it is to go build it. So Well, it's not a cheap deck to build. It's a, the metagame evolution is a little bit slower than in standard. Oh. But Your point is well taken. Davis looking at his Sphinx's Revelation. Also looking at Archangel. But unlike last game, there's a lot more mana available here for Merriam to counter the Archangel. So all Davis can do is play land and simply pass the turn back. Again, it's funny because Miriam has a, a, a decent amount of counterspells in his deck, but, you know, this is a thing where one counterspell is the backbreaker. Yeah. It's not having to slog through a bunch of counterspells. It's, oh, man, he has this is all for this. I don't think I can win. And he keeps leaving up all of that mana. And what makes this matchup so interesting, the tension of Ross doesn't actually have to have the counterspell. No. But the th mere threat of it is what makes things difficult for Jim. You see Ross is going to play his eighth land and cast Thassa now. You know, this might be a battle worth fighting. That does not look to be the case. Last last turn, even in combat, Jim used an Azorius Charm as a just as a full concession to a counterspell and attempt to just get this Thassa with a Deicide instead. You do all feeling a little frisky here. In comes Frostburn Weird and the Mutable. You see Davis Slight Total sitting here at 14. The shields feel a little bit further down now. Mm -hmm. Five mana is a lot more scary than three. It makes it much more likely that it's just one counter spell in Ross's hand instead of two. Yes. Davis he says, could still okay. have to spell plus gainsay slash negate, but. Yep. Maybe we're going to take his chase up to three. I think we might see some action here from Jim on the end step. Could very easily see Deicide plus Dissolve here be the battle that we have. Let's see if that's what Jim wants to do. Might want to just try to resolve a revelation or try to get his revelation counterspell. I think he has to lead off with Rev because I just don't think he can basically incinerate another turn here. Not in, like he can't, I don't think he can pass back. It. This seems like his best spot to spend an entire turn revving. Well, I think I feel like this turn his option is either rev for three and hope it resolves or deicide and pick a fight over the Thassa. He can end step deicide and he has, he has a dissolve and so we can have a little bit of a battle here. If he loses the battle, which I don't think he will, but if he loses the battle, then he can say, okay, fine, tap all my mana and revelate on my own turn while, you're sp while your shields are down and we can see what happens. But right now, he's just going to choose to rev for three, and we'll see if Miriam has any interest in countering this. I like this play a lot from Jim. I believe this revelation for three is just good enough to counter. Yeah, I think so, too. And uh, if Ross doesn't fight over this, great. Jim's happy with that. And if he does, then you're free to, say, resolve DSI plus Jace or whatever next turn. Mm -hmm. You see Miriam looking at his hand. Like you said, this is the revelation that is just good enough to counter. So if Ross is holding on to only one counter spell, this is a really tough call. And he's going to counter it with negate. Pass the turn back over to Davis. Now, if Davis is able to spike a land here, it's huge. Let's see what he draws. It's a Jace. And I was thinking his turn could have been great if he draws a land. He can play um, Deicide on 
Mufasa and Spike Archangel. Yeah. We're looking at a much different game at that point. This turn is still relatively good, all things considered. DSI taking care of Thassa, and he can resolve a Jace. Well, keep in mind that Ross has one copy of his spell in his sideboard, so this DSI is not guaranteed to resolve here. What do we do if we're Davis? Do we have to DSI now? Do we lead with Jace? I see him reaching. Looks like he's going to lead with DSI, targeting Thassa. Do you have a dispel is the question. The answer is no. He's going to see the grip. Nightville, Spectre, and Jace. A lot of weakness there from Ross. Now the green light's on for Jim. This is an imminently beatable hand for Jim. So now all the Thassas are gone. That problem is taken care of. And Jim sees exactly what Ross is up to. And I'm with you where Ross had the opportunity to resolve that Jace memory adept, did not take it. Now, and this that might become that to hurt him a little bit. Now, that bit. assumes he had an untapped land in his hand on the fifth turn, which I believe he did. I do, but I'm too. Not, I'm not 100% on that. But again, against the opponent with no detention spheres, no mute vault in play, really far away from casting Archangel, I do not quite understand what the risk is. Either way, all Thassas are gone. Miriam will shuffle his deck. Jim will shuffle it again, of course, as well. But DSI doing some really nice work. And this is actually the first time that we have seen DSI take care of all the gods. Yeah. That's part of the power level of that card. A coverage first for me. And then you do see Davis's hand right now, the Dissolve, the Verdict, the Archangel, and that Jace that he just drew this turn. Feels like a Jace probably comes in next. And Jim, if he wants to, can actually play Jace and plus it, which survives Ross's board and may compel Ross to play further into the Supreme Verdict that's in Jim's hand. Absolutely. And here is the Architect of Thought. Again, Miriam's hand right now, and he's going to take Jace down. So there you see another copy of Dia's side. Follow that up with an Azorius Guildgate, and now an Azorius Charm. Again, Miriam's Hand, Nightville Spectre, and Jace Memory Adept. With a mystery card coming for his draw step, there's your split. Of course, one D aside is good, which Jim has already cast. The follow-ups aren't great, but it can't take care of Biden of Thassa. Yep. Let's not forget as well, Davis' shields are mighty exposed right now. So if that Jace that's in play for Miriam is able to reveal it by Nathasa, Miriam can get his card drawing engine going. And you have to imagine that Jace is going to be taking down there for Ross. So this is a really, really big turn here for the Mono Blue Devotion player. Starts by drawing a copy of Frostburn Weird. Down goes the Jace Architect of Thought. The first card is Mutavolt. Second is Frostburn Weird. Third is Nylon. Davis, it feels like dodges a bullet there. Yep, a counter spell is really bad in that spot for for Jim, as is Biden, so. Fortunate stuff. The split is Munivolt versus. Munivolt is a relatively easy take, I believe, there for Miriam. And yeah, the weird is just something else that gets caught up in a sweeper. Munivolt is part of another angle of attack. So what will the follow-up play be? Looks like an activation of Mutavault here. You have to imagine that Miriam wants to get Davis's Jace off the table. Such a powerful card. Yeah, get, letting Jim look at three more cards here is unacceptable. And in comes the Mutavault at Jace. Frostmore to Miriam. Any pumps to be had is the question. Yeah, Miriam really can't bluff all that much. No, not, not, I mean, his... Jim knows everything about his hand except for one random draw, basically. Yeah. There's your pump for four. Miriam's going to put Davis down to seven. There's a Mutavolt. And simply pass the turn back. Does not have any interest in playing the Nightfell Spectre. So Davis will untap. Seven lands. Take a draw here. We'll see what he can find. Picks up an island. That's a pretty big draw, actually. That's land number eight, so Archangel with protection. And that could be the start where, where Jim starts to get this swung around. And you see Davis's hand. He's had that Supreme Verdict for some time now. 
thing is, once he casts the Archangel, the cost of playing the Supreme Verdict goes up so much. Yeah. So he has to be fairly confident that this Archangel can stabilize the board on its own, which I believe it has the potential to do. I believe that is the case as well. There is an Archangel of Thune. A very, very powerful card that does come into play here. Davis is just going to kick it on back. The 3-4 flyer from M14 has shown up. We have seen it beat Mono Blue Devotion before in the hands of Alexander Hain, and it looks like it's going to try to do this again. Beautiful's going to go back into the row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going to hide out with the lands again. Any trades to be had? Probably <laughs> not, I'm guessing. <laughs> traders, any any traders? Although maybe, I mean, again, Jim's life total is slipping. Activations one at a time there for me. I'm gonna turn his frostmer into a four one. Davis is gonna go down to three. Jason's gonna tick up here. Marion with the Frostborn Weird Night Veil Spectre. Looks like he's going to add a little more to the board. Maybe, maybe not. Looks like it might be a Night, it might be a night Veil Spectre, actually, that he adds to the board. To be able to chump block, if you'd like. Also, let's not forget, it's not even really chump blocking. It's actually a favorable block, because when Archangel attacks, it's 2-3. Yep. It's actually not much of a chump block at all. In fact, this feels borderline dissolve-worthy to me. Jim's going to take a look. As I kind of agree with you, that Nightfall Spectre is actually a bit of a problem. Now, I imagine that you want to save something, you know, in theory, save something, save the dissolve for something better, excuse me, but I'm not sure it gets better than this, given the situation. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, the Nightfall significantly complicates things, and if Jim wasn't willing to block the Frostburn weird, it feels like you're almost compelled to fight over the Nightfall Spectre. I think in a perfect world, Jim would say, I'll just save this Dissolve for that Jace Memory Adept. Yeah, and it looks like, it looks like he is going to dissolve this. So I think that's a good assessment of what's going on in the game by Jim. Yeah, I think his hand is forced in that spot. It's not pretty. And, it, you know, when you know that there's some threatening cards in Ross's hand, it's not the easiest decision to make. But given the way Jim has played this turn thus far, I think his hand is somewhat forced. I think he needs to counter this. Davis looking at the top card of his deck, and he is going to leave it on top. That's got to be uneasy if you're Miriam. There is an island. This is a Frostburn weird. Counter shields are down. Let's see if Davis can take advantage of it. Going to untap all these lands, all eight of them. And the again, weird. he knows the top card. The weird's a lot of pressure, though. Absolutely it is. Two Muta Vaults in play still on Ross's side. Davis with a draw. This is what he kept. It's a Jace. So he has enough mana to grow a Muta Vault after he hits with the Archangel. Play Jason plus it. And also block with the Muta Vault the next turn. Jim goes up to five in this sequence. The Muta Vaults are three. And the Weir can hit for a maximum of... All right, so they're still lethal in play, I believe, on Ross's side next turn. Yeah, because Jim's going to go up to five with the Archangel attack. Right. Archangel's going to go from a three from, from a three to a two from the Jace trigger. The best block that Jim has access to is on a Frostburn Weird. The Weird can pump to a 4-1. Minus one is three. Each Muta Vault is a point, four, five. And Jim can't animate his Muta Vault, hit with the Archangel, and then Supreme Verdict, leaving a Muta Vault back, a 3-3 Muta Vault on defense, because the Muta Vault dies to the Supreme Verdict, mm -hmm. so. See, he's really moving now. Trying to, trying to do some math here, trying to figure out what he does to get himself out of the situation. Doesn't seem like a great spot to be in. Well, what he can do is just Archangel on to Jace, yep. get it off the table, cast Supreme Verdict, yep. play Jace and plus it. The next turn, he gets to untap with Muta Vault in play and a Jace he can plus. The Muta Vaults can no longer attack, and if Ross misses a couple draw steps, he can start to pull back into the game. Let's see if that's what the conclusion is that he comes to. 
see he's doing the math, and this is going to be the start. Here's an attack. You see him slide it over. It looks like it's going towards Jace. Now what's going to be really interesting, of course, is how much life does Jim gain here? Because it should only be two, and it will be, okay. Because yeah. it's on roster, remember, his Jace trigger. And we're at a, we're at a lengthy match here. Right. So. I mean, we're approaching minute 90. Yeah. We've been going for a while here. And, and Jim, Jim has found the play here. Uh, I think this gives him the best shot of winning. Ross needs to miss probably two draw steps here, draw nothing of significance. Jim I, is still going to have to beat the Jace at some point, too, which is going to be tough. But I believe the draw is a tied binder mage. It's either a tied binder or a bite. They actually kind of look the same from a distance. It's a, those, it's a big difference between those two. Cards. You're absolutely <laughs> right about that. Now, to be fair, if it was a bite, I think it'd be already on the table. Yeah. You see, Miriam's going to do a little bit of math here. You get one card that we do know, and uh, this it is this math. He's How many cards are in your deck, math? He's asking for the count. Yep. We want to know how many cards are there. Because I am on the plan to now start milling you with Jace. And Ross appears to be potentially looking to ship gears here, which I like just because uh, it, it, the game is starting to feel like it's going to be hard for Ross to deal the last five points. That Jace is going to be problematic. Ross doesn't have any real backup threats. That's in. Will he mill or will he draw a card? 38 cards right now in Jim Davis' stack, by the way. And he will mill a card and draw a card. Mills a planes. The draw's a mystery. Mute of Vaults are ready. And they come. You have to imagine that going after Davis's life total, and they are. Jace Trigger is going to make it, so it's an attack for two. Davis is going to go down to three and untap all those lands. Miriam Shields are down outside of the spell, which is what Davis draws. Now, if you're Davis, this is where things get a little interesting. Do you take up or do you go down? Uh, he might need. I think like he. I think he needs help here, because he can take up, and those mutavolts are bricked. Yes. But that doesn't solve the problem that's over there on the table, which is Jay. So he is going to take down. So we're going to take a look at it. Okay. An Elspeth, a Temple of Enlightenment, and a Mutavault. Elspeth will certainly change some things. Assuming Jim takes it, which I believe he will here. Because he also needs to be able to threaten Ross's Jace. Yeah, I think that's the, I think that's yeah. the reason he has to take it is because this gives him a way to win the game, it gives him a way to protect himself, and it gives him a way to go after Ross's chase. I think it's everything he's looking for in a card. Yeah. Miriam can't be too thrilled about that reveal. Now he's trying to figure out how to split things up. Again, Miriam is unable to bluff counter magic in this situation. One blue is only dissolved. Excuse me, is only dispelled. But Mutavault's pretty threatening for Ross here, too. I don't think he can split Mutavault against. Oh, wow. Maybe a little game inside the game? Wow. I guess you can split Mutavault against. Just did. Davis is going to give us a real hard yeah, look Yeah, he's, he's trying to figure out what, what could have compelled him to, to do this. Jim's going to make the obvious play here. Edelbalt's going to go away. Don't forget Davis hasn't played a land yet this turn. So that Azoria's Guildgate might not be the biggest deal, but it is a land, and you can't say no to a land in a deck that has Sphinx's Revelation. And Scrying here is very good for Jim as well. So there's a temple. Let's take a look. Didn't get a great look at it, but he's going to think about it. And he's going to keep it. There's that sinking feeling. I need the following players to please report to the stage. 
Aramis Cuello, Here comes another one. Brian Green. There's Andrew the Sun's Jones, champion. And Nick Ambrose. That elevator goes up to five. Here's Three soldier Cuello, tokens coming. Cuello, Any attacks with Mutavault to be had here, you think? Ambrose, Maybe slow down that chase? I don't think so. I think it's, it's really good for uh, Jim to leave his mana up in this spot here. And what does knocking Jace down to three really do? Sure. Here's a bigger question. Do you think Miriam on the last turn should have drawn, or do we go after that library? 38 cards when he played the Jace Memory Adept. It would take him four activations to get the job done. Yeah, and possibly three. It's possible. It's possible three gets it done. Yeah. Miriam will draw. Master of Waves is what he picked up for the turn. Master of Waves much worse on this board position. <laughs> Certainly. And now it almost feels like Ross can't pivot now that he's gone down this road with the Jace. I, I think to, to keep up with the resource battle that Jim's starting to win, he may need to draw cards. So suppose you can make the argument here that between these Mutavolts, the Master Waves that was just drawn, he's also got a couple of other knuckleheads in his hand. He may just be able to play defense long enough. Protect the queen. Yeah. There's a mill of 10. He may have to pivot with no, with no choice but to pivot. Yeah. Because I don't think that Ross's draws are of a high enough quality to beat what's on the board. Right. Which is Elspeth and Jace. Now Mary was going to start tapping some mana. Nightfell Spectre is where he's going to start. Jim will take a look at his hand again. Dispel and Deicide are the cards over there. Nothing relevant going on for Davis. Miriam, of course, doesn't know that. Four mana, Master of Waves. Jim looks again. You see the Devotion. It'll be for six. And some Mutavolts back on defense as well. And just might be chump block time. And just hope that Jace, memory adept, can barely hang on. Uh huh. Davis takes a draw. The temple, not the most exciting, especially when you know you're going to be getting milled in one way or the other. Yeah. This game has swung back and forth. Yep. Been pretty crazy. An hour and a half these two have been battling. Gino Martinez, excuse me, Gino Batista has been waiting patiently. He was done in 15 minutes, I think. Yeah. Been just waiting with Mono Red. Who am I going to get to cut up in the finals? We'll see. But yeah, he's been sitting there the whole time <laughs> in the feature match here. He hasn't left. Hope he brought a book. Yeah. He's been watching this match just like we have. Davis going to go reaching. Trying to figure out exactly how he should use these planeswalkers as well as the Ladies cards in his hand. One thing he can do this turn is he can play Temple of Enlightenment. And then he can draw, he can flip the cards over, essentially drawing the card that he wants. The card that he's right. looking at is Planner Cleansing, which is a real weird one right now. Because I don't think that Jim wants to cast that card because his board is so good, but at the same time, he might have to to get those things off the table. And by those things, I, of course, just simply mean Jace Memory Adept. Yeah, and then it's his one Mutavault against Ross's two with Jim at three. Yep. So he needs help from there. Things just got more complicated, if that was even possible. So now Jinda has to decide if he even wants Plender Cleansing. Yep. Do you think you reset here? Man, I think that's tough. That is really tough. Yeah, I think I think he has to. And he's gonna turn over three cards. So hit one, two, and three, planner cleansing and land. So I think the split here for Miriam's actually pretty gosh darn easy. So if Jim does take planner cleansing, he will have a mutable back on defense. There's your split. 
There's your take. Lands are going to go to the bottom. So he's already used his Jace, and using an Elspeth right now doesn't do anything because he's going to lose it. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that he can do, is, of course, is just act with these soldier tokens. Also, I guess, I, I suppose we can't forget just how good Nightfall Spectre is actually on this board because, again, Davis is at three. So, yeah. you know, that could be just a chip shot in the air, put him down to one, and the Muta Vaults can clean up everything. So, yeah, I actually agree with you. I think he has to take Planner Cleansing. It's not great. It's not, it's not the ideal sweeper here, but it is good enough given the circumstances. You can see Jim doing this math really quickly, and I think the, the option here is, all right, let's, let's blow it all up. Yep. So away goes everything, except for probably the most important cards that are among the lands. Two Mutafalls for Merriman, only one for Davis. And Ross is really getting paid off now for that, that split earlier. Yeah, this is true. Jim had a planar cleansing away his own Elspeth. How valuable would a second Mutavault be on Jim's huge, side of the table? Huge, huge. Here come Mutavaults. They'll trade. Davis goes down to one. Let's see what Merriam's follow-up is, assuming he has one. He does. What is this? Tidebinder Mage and a Biden of Thassa. Davis will draw. The reason he didn't play Biden pre is because he knew about the deicide. Right. So, so now, make Jim incinerate two men on his uh -huh. own turn. So uh, now Davis will draw. I'm trying to figure out what the best card is in this situation. Space Revelation. Yeah, okay. How do we do? Supreme Verdict. And I think this Mutavault might just kill him. The verdict takes care of the Tidebinder Mage. But you see a deicide, you see a dispel. So there is the verdict, and Jim is hoping that Ross Merriam does not attack with the Muta Vault. He will untap. Merriam will take a draw. Will he fire it up? The answer is yes. In he goes. Davis will show that he wow. does not have it. Ross Merriam, a 95-minute match is headed to Incredible. the finals. Two games to one over Jim Davis playing blue-white control. Just what a, a match. Great, just a great match. What a match. Great magic. Nothing else to say. A great run for Jim here. I know a little disappointed here. Uh, fell a bit short of winning this tournament, but um, he has nothing to be ashamed of here. Just a, a great run with a, a very cool deck. It's clearly a labor of love for him. But Ross's post-board game plan, just a little too good in this matchup.